So tonight we're going to take a look in Revelation and we're going to decode a couple of things in Revelation. And uh, we're going to decode the seventh angel. That's what we're going to decode in Revelation. Now the seventh angel is also Christ in Revelation that we're going to see. Uh, it's also the Son of Man that we see in Revelation. Now, before we get started, uh, it might be a good idea for some of you to go and check out and watch the recent video I created about black holes being found all over ancient cultures. In other words, they all knew about black holes a long time ago. The black hole is significant because the black hole would be considered the first cognizable image, the first visible image over all of creation. So when a black hole appears, then we see all the stuff come out of the black hole that creates the cosmos. This is why we see that in every galaxy, we see that there is a black hole in the center of it, and surrounding the black hole you see all of this creation. It's not because it somehow pulled all of this matter from these other areas, it's because it actually creates the matter, and that's the reason why you see it. Um, in fact, we're going to find that the uh, Orion Nebula, which is what we're going to be discussing, is actually a place that creates stars, and the outer part of it looks a lot like the galaxy. There's all kinds of things we can see that, sh that tell us that uh, black holes actually create things. They don't destroy things. They probably destroy some things, uh, but they create mostly. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little bit of this stuff here from Manley Hall. We're going to cross-reference against the Bible, cross-reference against other text, and we're going to see what this seventh angel actually is. It's actually mentioned in several different chapters in the Bible, not just in Revelation. So let's take a look. Let's listen to this first. That in the end, all things return to the earth or to God. Therefore, in a sense, deity becomes a symbol of earth, an earth of deity. In the Jewish mysticism, the development of the great concept resulted also in a secondary god form. This secondary god form was called Macroprosopus. I'm going to stop him right there, and I'm going to show you this is from Kabbalah Unveiled, and this is the Macroprosopus. Okay? Now, just to identify what the Macroprosopus is, therefore it is called the open eye, the holy eye, the excellent eye, the eye of providence, the eye which sleepeth not, nor uh, neither slumbereth, the eye which is the guardian of all things, the eye which is the subsistence of all things. The Eye of Providence. The symbol for the Eye of Providence is this. So this is what he's speaking of when he's speaking of the Macroprosopus. Now, what we know from last time, that it sits at the very top of the pyramid. So, since it sits at the very top of the pyramid, and it represents that area, which is... Uh, we'll take a look at that real quick. When we take a look at the Tree of Life, uh, Yod, which sits at the very top of the Tetragrammaton, which is what we also see in the Tetractus, and what we will also see on the Hermit, which is Hermes, the Yod is inside the triangle, and the triangle is referring to the head, and that is the same as what we see as Osiris, the eye that's in the tent. This is all the same symbolism. It's the same symbolism as the, as the Macroprosopus, but it is also the symbolism for Christ and the Son of Man, as we'll see. All right, I'm going to play a little bit more. Or the long face. The Macroprosophus represented the revelation of deity in the creation process. And there emerged out of the mystery of infinite being the gigantic figure like the giant of the vision of Nebuchadnezzar. A mysterious and... So what emerged out of infinite being, okay... Well, let's take a look here. We've got I've got my uh, e sword open here, 
And so what we see here, now you see all of these green numbers right here. These green numbers give you the definition of the actual word itself in the Hebrew and, and the word the Greek, depending on whether it's New Testament or Old Testament. So right we see, we see that up here in Colossians 1.15, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all the creation, the firstborn out of the infinite. That's what the Son is. And what we take a look at, Colossians 1.15, first it's referring to his Son, G5207, and it speaks of Colossians 1.14 and 1.15, and he's the firstborn over all the creation. So when we come down here, the Son of Man, same number. You should see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. This is the Son of Man, cloth with a cloud and a rainbow around his head. This is what the Son of Man is. And what it refers to is it refers to the head of the Adam Cadman. It also refers to Christ. This is the Christ right here. It's the firstborn of the infinite. Okay, so now we're going to continue. He's still talking about Macroprosopus. So, I'm going to back it up just a little bit. Play this part. A figure like the giant of the vision of Nebuchadnezzar. A mysterious and colossal figure with one foot upon the oceans and the other upon the land. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, Revelation 10.2, or 10.1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud. Same thing that we saw up there. And a rainbow upon his head. And his face was, as it were, as the sun. Okay, so let's take a look at this real quick. This is where the head is. Its face were as the sun. And this is what he's talking about. Cloth with a cloud with a rainbow about its head. Right there. We're still talking about the Macroprosopus, and the Macroprosopus is the same as the Eye of Providence, as we read in, in uh, Kabbalah. And then down here, which we just heard him say this, of Nebuchadnezzar, a mysterious and colossal figure, with one foot upon the oceans and the other upon the land. With one foot upon the oceans and the other upon the land, Revelations 10.2. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot upon the earth. So we're talking about the same thing. And it says right here, it says, His face were as the sun, and his feet were as pillars of fire, because the pillars of fire represents the black hole. This is uh, seen in several others. Dan, uh, Daniel, excuse me, the thrones, I beheld and the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and his hair, and the hair of his head like pure wool, his throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Those wheels are the same as what we see when we, uh, uh, when we're looking to say a vortex, the wheels within a vortex, burning fire. A fiery stream issued forth before him. And uh, and then we have down here in Daniel. Behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before them. And then Isaiah, we see, behold, the Lord will come with fire. The Lord is the same as the Tetragrammaton; it represents Jehovah. And he will come with fire, and his chariot like a whirlwind. In Ezekiel, and I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. This is the north, this is the south. Whirlwind came out of the north. This is where the whirlwind is right here. And the appearance of wheels in their work was like the color of barrel, and they had four, had one likeness, and their appearance of their work was like a wheel within the middle of a wheel. So you always see them cross these two wheels. It should be concentric because we're talking about a vortex. And then we have in Revelation 4 6, right here in Ezekiel, it says that, and their rings were full of eyes round about them. And then in Revelation 4 6, we see that 
Before the throne there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal. In the midst of the throne, round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes. As you can see, in Ezekiel and in Daniel and Revelations, we're talking about the same thing. And what we're talking about is the Son of Man coming with a cloud. The cloud that he's mentioning. Cloth with a cloud. Now, let's go a little bit further. Around whose body the stars and planets moved, and whose face was always in profile. Around whose body the stars and planets moved, and its face was always in profile. Well, Michelangelo, as you know, gave us the painting of the Orion Nebula. This is what he painted. And what he actually painted was he did what he was supposed to. He painted Christ. Because this is Christ. And it is the first uh, born of all creation. It's the black hole. This is the angel that you see right here, clothed with a cloud, which is the whole Orion Nebula. And this is the face that's always in profile that's being spoken of. This thing right here that you see, this triangle, is the same thing that you see right here this is the same thing being shown that you see right here in the Orion Nebula this is the angel cloth with a cloud with a rainbow upon its head and this is what you're seeing right here which the stars and planets move around it not just the planets like our Sun but the stars and the planets move around it and his face was always in profile this is what Michelangelo showed us, and this is what we're looking at right here. Around whose body the stars and planets moved, and whose face was always in profile, because deity was re represented always with one eye. This eye, the pineal gland. This mysterious macroprosophus, or the long face, was the clothed God, clothed in creation, God as creation, God as cosmos, as an infinite diversity of universes and solar systems, as made up of a great cluster of stars. As made up of a great cluster of stars, which is what we see right here. The vestments of this being were like the radiant fringe of the Milky Way. So he's saying that this being was clothed like the fringe of the Milky Way. Well, let's take a look at something real quick. Let's take a look and see if this thing is clothed like the Milky Way, the fringe of it. Well, here is your Milky Way, and you can see that the fringe of it consists of spirals, and the Orion Nebula has the same thing going on. This is the angel cloth with a cloud, which has a triangle sitting right in the middle of it, which is the macroprosopus, which is the eye of providence. It sits right in the middle of this thing. It's the black hole that sits right in the middle of it. It's the first cognizable image out of the infinite. And as you can see, it has the same twisting motion that you see on the Milky Way. Also notice, this is where our sun is, and here's where Orion is. So as far as black holes go, uh, it's very possible that this area created our sun. And it was surrounded by angels full of eyes, which were the stars. Same thing as the Orion Nebula. And its vehicle was the Merkava of Ezekiel, the chariot of righteousness. Okay. So we have this text right here that we looked at last time. The brain is the Merkava or chariot of the pineal gland. And the ten smaller vortices in the aura of the gland are the horses attached to the chariot of the sun. The racing steeds described by St. Chrysostom. This is from The Divine Art by Manly P. Hall, and this is quoted from uh, Blavatsky. So the brain is the Merkava. This is exactly what we see in our image from uh, Michelangelo painting the brain. And the brain, and the, uh, and, or painting the brain, and also the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula, the clouds around it, is the Merkava, or is the uh, chariot of righteousness carrying the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is the triangular area that sits in the middle of it. This is the area is the Christ. 
and its vehicle was the Merkava of Ezekiel, the chariot of righteousness. And in the midst of this great machinery of the universe sat the ancient of the most ancients, the power at the root of all things, unchangeable and in its own visage unknowable. We now have Ain, Ain Sof, and Ain Sof Air revealed through the great face with its threefold forked beard. The hairs of the beard being the streamers of energy moving from the three powers of the deity. This macroprosophus, or the long face, rises above the horizon of infinites, like a sun rising from darkness. Now let's scan over a couple of these verses based on what we just heard as well, make sure we've covered everything here. In Daniel we see that a fiery stream issued forth and came before him, so we know this is speaking of the same thing, because he calls it the Ancient of Days, which is the same as what we see in the uh, Kabbalah uh, as far as the Makroposopus. It's also the Ancient of Days. Uh, and then here we see that the Lord will come with fire and his chariots like a whirlwind. Well, the chariot, that's the same thing as the brain, and it's, just, it's also fire with chariots. Uh, it's the Merkava. Ezekiel said he looked and a whirlwind came out of the north. And we see down here in 2 Kings 2.11, And it came to pass, they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a by whirlwind into heaven. A whirlwind again. Same thing as this black hole. Now some of this stuff is um, supposed to be looked at with correspondence. In other words, think about yourself when you think about the macrocosm. You have to think about the microcosm, which is yourself. So it could be that when they speak of the whirlwind in heaven, they could be speaking of the, uh, the pineal gland inside that person's head as well. So we have to think of it always from a macrocosm and microcosm's perspective. So we talk about the dear son, this right here, who's in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all of creation which is what we see here. The sun is the image of the invisible God, firstborn over all creation. It's that black hole, that first cognizable image. And it's in the image of the invisible God. And what we see is, is this is the area of the archetype. So when you have something come out of that black hole from the infinite, the first thing it creates is that archetype, and it creates that logos, which is man. For by him were all things created that are in the heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible. So. Um, whether they be thrones, dominions, or principalities of powers. Okay, so the first thing, this black hole is created, which represents more than just the physical, and, and but it also represents mind. And everything gets created through it. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, same number, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and a gird about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, and his eyes were a flame of fire. Same thing as what we see with the Macroprosopus. Same thing as the pillar, same thing as the black hole. And in his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Think of the pillars. His countenance, his face, was as the sun shineth in its strength. The face, right here, shineth in its strength. This is the sun of righteousness. This is the sun, the spiritual central sun, up here in the face. And then so what we're talking about here is the same angel. This is the Macroprosopus, because he was clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow upon his head, and his face, whereas the sun, which is what we just saw up here. And his one foot was on the land, and one foot was on the sea. And that's exactly what we see with the Macroprosopus. This is the same as uh, when you take a look at the Tree of Life. You have to look at the ma uh, macrocosm, and you have to take a look at the microcosm, which is you. So when it says his face shineth like the strength, see this is the heart, of the Adam Cadman. This is the pineal gland of the Adam Cadman, which is the center of the Orion Nebula. 
through all of this, everything else was created. So it created the sun, and it created the earth, and, it and then it inhabits all of this stuff. So the seventh angel in Revelations, which is described, which has the same descriptions as the Macroprosopis, uh, which is the same as the Eye of Providence, is Christ. You guys take care, and I'll talk to you soon.